Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Nukil Harpa, the voice of an angel, the soul of the devil. I'm going to take you back in time and introduce you to the most wonderful of instruments, the Nukil Harpa. Now, normally, my introduction goes like this. This is the Nukil Harpa. It's got 12 synthetic resonating strings tuned chromatically, four bowed strings powered by 37 keys in three rows that you can only see like this. It's made of spruce, and the oldest ones are medieval, and we are going to take over the world, and after Trump, I know that anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> but this evening, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take you back into history and introduce you properly to the modern chromatic three row Nukil Harpa. Now, the earliest representation that we have of the Nukil Harpa is in Shellinger Church. Uh, we have a, a stone statue of a Nukil Harpa player. Um, but there is some dispute as to whether or not this really is a Nukil Harpa player. Uh, but the people that are saying that it is definitely a Nukil Harpa say, okay, so these, these keys, they, they, they might not be keys, they might be fingers. But these fingers here are very finely made and are very beautiful, whereas they're quite clumpy on the, on the key box. So it's most definitely, definitely a Nukil Harpa player, <laughs> dating back 1350. Next we have, in Siena Church in Italy, 1408, a church frieze. This is on the ceiling of the church, a beautiful uh, angel Nukil Harpa player. Uh, followed by Tofta Church near uh, Tiep in Sweden, 1490, another angel playing the Nikkel Harpa on the ceiling. And there's a whole raft of images of, of the Nikkel Harpa around this time there. Tiep, incidentally, is very close to where this Nikkel Harpa was made, and it's also very close to the Erik Solström Institute in Tubal, which is Nikkel Harpa HQ, so there's a real strong hold <laughs> of Nikkel Harpa up there. The Mora Harpa, 1526. This is the oldest real instrument that uh, we have. It's in the Zorn Museum, the Anders Zorn Museum in Mora, called the Mora Harpa because it was found in Mora. And uh, it's diatonic, had three strings, one drone string, or two drone strings and a melody string paired by one row of keys. But although it says 1526 on the back of the instrument and the wood carbon dates correctly, they're not entirely sure that that real is a real instrument from that time because it looks suspiciously like the Pretorius' Syntagma Musicum, uh, which dates back to 1620, and here you can see the Schlüsselfiddle, and it's exactly the same as the Mora Harpa. So they think that maybe the Mora Harpa was a copy of the book, but the book could be a copy of the instrument. We don't know. So current thinking is that the Mora Harpa doesn't really date back from 1526, but it's still the oldest instrument we have, and we still always say 1526. Uh, so, by the 1700s, ah. the sympathetic resonating strings were added to the instrument, possibly uh, from India via the Silk Route into the Netherlands and up to Stockholm uh, via the Viola de More. We don't know why they were added. And uh, the strings at this point would have been made of silk, so they're silk strings with sympathetic strings. Contrabass doesn't mean double bass, big double bass, it means either side of the drone string. So that's probably what we should really call it, not the contrabass, but the on the, on the other side of the drone string. And you would have a row of keys, and then you'd push one key, and then the two tangents would move, tangent on either end. So you kind of contra to the base. Um, then in 1830, we have the silver bass harpa, where they've taken the contra string that's on the other side of the drone and put it on the other, other side of the drone. So it's now uh, next to the melody string, which gives you more poss possibilities for chords and the like. Still got resonating strings. Uh, 1860, they decided that they quite missed the contra string on the other, with the, the melody string on the other side. So uh, they've, they've added it back in. So you have your contra string to the drone string, and here are the silver bar strings. <clears throat> yes, 1860. But it is not until uh, 19, uh, the 1930s with August Bullin. August Bullin wanted to play with the fiddlers in Stockholm, and he couldn't. Because up until this point, the Nicknapper was a drone instrument and a bit buzzy, didn't. He couldn't really play with the fiddle, so he re rejigged it. He altered it and made it three rows and fully chromatic, or well, mostly fully chromatic. So he is the guy yeah. that we have to thank for the fact that we have the modern three row, as it were. But at this point, there are still only about 20 players left. It's a dying out instrument. Uh, you couldn't buy your own because there weren't really any makers. So in the 1970s, we have Erik Salström. Erik Salström, uh, he had evening classes where you could build your own instrument. Uh, government funded, uh, and there was a joke in Sweden that you would, when you retired, you would then go and make your nickel handbag. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a joke, but it also possibly wasn't a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
so thanks to him that we have loads of instruments that you can buy on eBay, Swedish eBay. And um, it's now so popular, he did such a good job that uh, we have, it's on stamps. It was on the 50 kroner note up until last October uh, when it ceased to become legal tender. They should have left it there, I think, uh, and lots of stamps. So I would like to now show you a close-up of the Nikola Harpa. And uh, so I have a camera here that I'm going to use to do a close-up for you. And, um, oh yeah, Sigtuna key. We're just going to, yeah, to that one. <laughs> to the Sigtuna key. So the Sigtuna key was found in an archaeological dig uh, in, uh, in 1935. Uh, they labelled it up, stuck it in a box, stuck it in a museum, and was promptly forgotten about until Magnus Holmström, last year, he heard about this key and uh, decided, seeing as he lives in Sigtuna, he would go and have a look. Uh, he said he wasn't expecting very much. If there was a Nicol Harper key dating back to 1200, we'd all know about it. So um, he went and had a look. And he said that when he saw this key, uh, it, just the, the hairs rose on the back of his neck. It couldn't be anything but a Nicol Harper key, even down to it's got a little dint in it where the tangent would go. So this is the, uh, the Sig Tuna key. So now we can say that the Nicol Harper dates back to 1200, um, before, before the 1350... Uh, the island of Gotland. <laughs>